I don't want to waste more money. Just do it right, all right? We're in love. We're spanning time. Look like you like me. Look like we're husband and wife. Okay? I do like you, Billy. Okay, you know what I mean. I mean like you like me like you're my wife, like you're in love, that kind of life. Autor cinema can be a very mixed style. It's easy to pour too much of yourself into filmmaking projects. Some directors are impersonal and are able to take a variety of different projects, put their own spin on it, but ultimately can move in and out of it. However, the auteur is different. These are directors who pour so much of themselves into a project, a project they might even write, direct, and star in, that they become inseparable, at least in the public imagination, from their work. It's the kind of style that can be very easy to burn out from. This is Vincent Gallo whose directorial debut, Buffalo 66, has endlessly fascinated critics and bloggers. Vincent Gallo grew up in Buffalo, New York, born in 1961. He had a pretty difficult childhood with an abusive father and what he describes as a dishonest and kind of kleptomaniac mother. His parents did a ton of gambling, and Vincent was exposed to crime at a young age. He claims that he was handpicked by gangsters to become a wise guy, but was also talked out of a life of crime at age 12 by an older mafia guy who saw his promise. Instead taking a different path, Vincent ran away from his poor Italian neighborhood at age 16. He went where everyone goes who wants to be an artist in New York, to the city. He lived in his car, had sex for money, and worked odd jobs. During this time period, Gallo began to have success as a painter, making friends with Basquiat, and also beginning to make short films. He's in the film Downtown 81, which immortalized Basquiat a decade after his death. He was cast in the film The Way It Is with Steve Buscemi and The Equalizer. He got his first starring role in 1989 with the film Doc's Kingdom, which then got him a bunch of small and supporting roles in films like Goodfellas and House of the Spirits and The Arizona Dream. A lot of you may be wondering what Legere means. A lot of you may be wondering what kind of name it is. Is it Italian or is it Swedish? Well, actually, it's a French name and it literally means born to act. And that's exactly what I'm going to do for you uh, this evening. A series of films with Claire Denis, the French director. Vincent Gallo's looks are sharp and unique and intense, and during this time period, he was also modeling for Calvin Klein. In 1998, Vincent Gallo released Buffalo 66. Although Gallo's life had been in New York City, Buffalo had left an indelible mark on him. The inferiority complex that Buffalo has to bigger cities is something they share. Gallo returned home to shoot Buffalo 66 in and around the city, including the Gowanda Correctional Facility located 40 miles south of Buffalo. Buffalo 66 has Vincent Gallo playing Billy Brown, a former inmate who gets released after five years in prison. Honey, honey, just... Turn it away, please! What? What? The knife is not pointed at you! Yes, it pointed at me! Honey! Don't tell me you didn't point the knife at I me! I did not point the knife Don't at you! Don't point the knife at a person unless you want to I use it! I point the knife at you! Billy's parents are based on Vincent Gallo's own parents, and the film clearly has Gallo working through some of his own traumatic experiences. Angelica Houston and Ben Gazzara play Billy's parents, who show almost no reaction or interest in their son, who they haven't seen in five years. I, he's the kindest, smartest, most handsome guy there. I mean, even the guys loved him. They idolized him. So... <laughs> I just, I just couldn't. I, I didn't think he'd ever like me. I was just a little typist girl. And, you know, he was like the king. In Buffalo 66, Billy kidnaps a girl named Layla, played by Christina Rishi, and makes her pretend to be his teenage wife. This is meant to impress Billy's parents, who he is told he has a wife and a fancy government job. Throughout the course of the day, Billy and Layla go through an intense emotional roller coaster, with Billy wanting to seek revenge on Scott Wood, the former kicker of the Buffalo Bills, whose missed kick, possibly a dive to the Mafia, loses the Super Bowl. Billy had bet $10,000 he doesn't have on the Bills to a bookie played by Mickey Rourke. Because of that, Billy had to confess to a crime he didn't commit, which landed him in prison. I thought somebody turned up the heat. So, Billy, what happened was this book, he got so sick of hearing everybody's excuses. I mean, they're all the same, you know. Everybody's got an excuse. Anyway, this book, he got so sick that he just had to throw up. And the only way he could make himself feel better was to to do bad things. Interestingly, I think, Mickey Rourke is an actor who has a lot in common with Vincent Gallo. They're both conservative Republicans 
whose outspokenness and constant feuding with other celebrities eventually caught up to them and hurt their careers. What is the word career? You know, in the end, uh, if Mickey becomes poor, if he became washed up, it doesn't matter. He did it. Actor, boxer, poet, biker, lover. Sean Penn wishes he was Mickey Rourke. They're also both very talented in multiple artistic and athletic fields. This infamous kick is based on a real missed field goal in the 1991 Super Bowl game between the Giants and the Bills. As an audience, we find out more and more about Billy Brown, including that he had an obsession with a girl in Wendy Balsam, who was played by Rosanna Arquette. Yeah. Did you live on my block? Because I used to see you walk by my house every day. I had a friend who lived over there. Oh, yeah. It was just so strange because every time I looked out my window, I would see you walking by. <laughs> this is Don. And what's your name again? Layla is falling more and more in love with Billy. God knows why. I guess girls just love bad boys. And it's this love that is the crucial thing Billy needed to stay tethered to reality and to progress in life rather than just giving up that life in search of revenge. The real Christina Ricci has called Vincent Gallo a control freak and the filming of Buffalo 66 traumatic and abusive. She vowed never to work with him again and he also had a tough relationship with Angelica Houston. Gallo's response has been that he did all the work, made the creative choices down to making her sweater and doing her hair and Christina Ricci was just his doll. Buffalo 66 has been hailed as a great exemplar of indie filmmaking at a time when indie filmmaking was at the new cultural zenith. Vincent Gallo has been compared to Harmony Corinne, whose film Kids debuted in 1995. They are both intensely controversial writer-directors, however Vincent Gallo's career kind of stalled out after his next two films did not have the cultural success of Buffalo 66. And that's where we get back to auteur burnout, which each film and the press and media rollout being these huge, legendarily controversial press runs. For me it went from zero stars to three stars. So I told Gallo he has redeemed his film and he tells me why he lashed out about what I said. To make the worst film in the world, or the worst film in con history, you would have to go in with bad intention. Let's yeah. put Paris Hilton in Rocky Seven and hire Joe Schmo to write it and just, you know, that's the worst film in the, in the world. Not to mention Vincent Gallo's penchant for making far more enemies than friends. It's easy to see why Gallo's directorial career has been short-lived. How much are the hard cookies? Hard cookies? I think I 95 cents. 95? Right. Okay. You got a girlfriend? Yeah. Yeah? All right. I'm going to buy one for him. Okay. It's for your girlfriend. All right? Girlfriend. Don't chomp on it yourself. Save it for her. 